Hi, this is Michael Altos, and we are beginning our discussion of cardiovascular drugs. This is recording part one. A lot of this material was covered at the end of last semester, and you can refer back to that, to those notes and those materials to review. But just as a very, very quick recap, we spoke about alpha antagonists, specifically the non-selective drugs like phentolamine and phenoxybenzamine. We talked about the alpha-1 selective alpha antagonists, including prazosin, terazosin, doxazosin, which are used for prostate hypertrophy, but also for treatment of hypertension and in treatment of pheochromocytoma. And we talked about the side effects of alpha antagonism. The beta antagonists included non-selective drugs, which are beta-1 and beta-2 antagonists. That would be propranolol and its uses, most commonly in thyroid storm, and its side effects, including beta-2 specific side effects related to the lungs, and then beta-1 selective beta antagonists. That would be metoprolol, atenolol, and the short-acting esmolol. We spoke about mixed alpha and beta antagonists. That would be specifically labetalol, which has no reflex tachycardia, but not as much bradycardia as you might see with a pure beta antagonist. Um, it has alpha activity, um, which decreases peripheral vascular resistance and renin. And we talked about carvedilol or Coreg, which is a non-selective beta antagonist plus alpha-1 antagonist. And it's really an oral formulation, which acts similarly to labetalol. Finally, we spoke about alpha agonists, specifically clonidine, which is a centrally acting alpha-2 agonist that can also be used to lower blood pressure. And methyl dopa, which acts uh, partially um, in the dopa decarboxylase pathway, but also has a secondary effect as an alpha-2 agonist. One other drug we would like to add to this discussion now is hydralazine. Brand name is apresoline. Hydralazine is a direct vasodilator. It causes vascular smooth muscle to relax in the arterioles more than in the veins. We see the effect especially in the coronary, cerebral, renal, and splanchnic circulation, and it decreases diastolic blood pressure especially well, although it does decrease systolic blood pressure too. Because of this direct effect, we see reflex tachycardia. There may be some mechanism by which hydralazine directly increases heart rate, but primarily we think of it as having a reflex tachycardia. A normal dose of hydralazine is anywhere from 2.5 to 10 milligrams IV. You may also see patients who take it orally. Now you need to know that hydralazine has a relatively slow onset of action even when given IV, easily 10 to 20 minutes before we see an effect from hydralazine. And its duration of action is usually somewhere in the 3 to 6 hour range. So this is not a fast acting drug and not an easily titratable drug. It's metabolized in the liver and renally excreted. Minoxidil is an oral medication which acts kind of like hydralazine and causes reflex tachycardia. If you see patients taking minoxidil for blood pressure, you know they probably have some very severe hypertension. Some of the side effects include fluid retention, edema, and pericardial effusion, and most interestingly, hypertrichosis, which is hair growth. And that's why minoxidil, whose brand name is Rogaine, was found to be useful for um, hair growth in patients with baldness. Let's take a moment and review the good old renin-angiotensin-aldosterone pathway, where we see angiotensinogen made in the liver, and then it's converted to angiotensin-1 by means of renin. Renin is secreted from the kidney. Angiotensin-1 is then converted to angiotensin-2 through angiotensin-converting enzyme, or ACE, which is made in the lungs. Angiotensin-2 is a vasoconstrictor and also causes sodium and water retention. It also goes to the adrenal gland, where it stimulates production of aldosterone, which makes us save sodium and water and p-potassium. Drugs that can inhibit ACE, angiotensin-converting enzyme, can be very useful. They can be antihypertensive by, antihypertensive by blocking the effects of angiotensin-2 and aldosterone. Um, we see a lot of uh, favorable side effect profiles in these drugs. A lot of the depression, insomnia, sexual dysfunction, and electrolyte imbalances that we see in some of the other antihypertensives. And we'll talk about diuretics um, before too much longer in this semester. Uh, so we don't see as many of those side effects here. In fact, 
systemic hypertension and congestive heart failure are often treated as a first-line therapy with angiotensin-converting enzyme inhibitors or ACE inhibitors. They may even help reverse left ventricular hypertrophy due to hypertension. We see improved outcomes in diabetics, and by decreasing plasma aldosterone, we get decreased sodium and water retention. So let's start talking about some of these drugs. Most of these drugs end in pril, like enalapril, quinapril, ramipril, um, and it's useful to be familiar with these names because you'll see lots and lots of patients taking them. The most common side effect from ACE inhibitors is cough. Uh, people can also develop allergic-like symptoms, which may be due to accumulation of bradykinin. We do see decreased glomerular filtration in patients with renal dysfunction, so these, sh these drugs should be used carefully in that patient population. We can also see some hyperkalemia with these drugs, and that's because the decreased aldosterone activity may lead to some retention of potassium. It's important to know that patients can become allergic to ACE inhibitors and develop very impressive angioedema. So we always want to watch for that, and it can develop even quite a ways after starting the drug. We usually see it on initiation of the drug, but some patients can develop it months or even years after being on the drug. The drug is renally excreted. One thing we should highlight with ACE inhibitors is the effect of prolonged hypotension that's seen under general anesthesia. Some people actually recommend, I should say most people recommend, holding ACE inhibitors for at least 24 hours before surgery. Um, in some heart surgeries, they recommend holding them for a few days. People call this the vasoplegic syndrome, and what we see is patients who are unresponsive to vasopressors like phenylephrine or norepinephrine and become profoundly, dangerously hypotensive during general anesthesia. What's going on here? Well, there seems to be some dysregulation of their nitric oxide synthesis as well as activation of their vascular guanylate cyclase. What do we do when we have patients who are having um, vasoplegic syndrome under anesthesia? Well, vasopressin may be a helpful drug if the patients don't respond to fluid boluses or other sympathomimetic drugs. And there's also some data that methylene blue may be useful by inhibiting synthesis of nitric oxide and also the guanylate cyclase. And by decreasing uh, GMP and vascular smooth muscle relaxation, you may be able to restore blood pressure. And this has been done quite a bit in cardiac patients, especially after cardiac surgery, a bolus of one to two milligrams per kilogram given over 15 to 30 minutes, or an infusion sometimes is also used. Now we talked about angiotensin converting enzyme, and that affects the creation of angiotensin II, but we can act later in the same pathway with angiotensin II receptor blockers. So we can form the angiotensin II, but block the receptors where it acts. So these would be drugs like Losartan or Valsartan, also known as Kozar and Diavan. So we inhibit the hypertensive effect of angiotensin II with maybe a different side effect profile, so less incidence of cough, we will probably still see a lot of hyperkalemia, especially if these drugs are used together with potassium-sparing diuretics. So we do want to be careful about that. These drugs are metabolized in the liver, but for the most part, we think of them as similar to ACE inhibitors, and therefore you may want to consider discontinuing them as well before patients have major surgery with anesthesia. We'll stop here. Let me know if you have any questions, and we'll catch you in the next video.